What happens if we put the NTAG chip in tinfoil? Uh, I don't know, not gonna get much of a read. Hey everyone, what do we have here? We've got a laptop, we've got a series of Proxmarks, a whole mess of credentials, and some interesting lanyards and things. Today, we are talking about RFID. But not, you know, this is not going to be a whole crash course in all the things you can do to attack RFID. We, we run a course uh, at Red Team Alliance about that. That's for a topic for another day. What we're going to talk about is inspired by this purchase that I've made. Uh, every now and then, we get clients that ask us how to protect their credentials avoid sniffing, avoid cloning, and so forth. And there's a lot of solutions on the market. There's, you know, wallets that'll block your credit cards from being read, and, and there's a lot of sort of janky, slide it in, slide it out, kind of protecting, shielding lanyards. This is one of the nicest products. And when I got the, uh, I, I'd never actually gone hands-on with it. Bobic has told me about him before, and I said, I should really grab one. And then when I bought it, I said, well, wait, wait a minute, this is, this is strange. And it made me want to know more, and maybe it'll make you want to know more. Before we get started, if you want to know more about what I'm drinking, uh, it's not whiskey tonight. I've had a kind of a bit of whiskey today, so I'm going to cut down. I'm just having a nice Cab Sav, which is perfectly delightful for the time being. I have one of my Proxmarks connected right now. Maybe later on we'll switch to different units to try different antennas to see if we get the same results. But I've got this propped up so it can act as though it's a badge reader kind of on a wall. So as we're presenting credentials, it's a little more natural. So right now, if I want to see how these cards read, we're going to give a little HF search because these happen to all be high frequency cards. So sure enough, bam. All right, I've got a standard NTAG contactless smart card here. This is a hotel key, so it's going to be a MyFair of some description. Sure enough, MyFair Classic, that's what you find in most hotels. Here we have a Magic Chinese card. Bam, thing, same thing, my fair with the, you know, backdoor commands enabled. This is a Russian transit system card that I got the last time I was in Moscow. Finding it, yep, there we go, my fair ultralight from NXP. And here we have an iClass card, an HID iClass card, although not made by HID. If you didn't know, iClass CIOS, it's actually NXP chips. They're just using Desfire MX. Okay. So we have all of these, they're all working, they're all good, right? Now, if we want to not have our cards read, well, there's a number of solutions. There's a number of solutions on the market, not least of which is people, you know, love to be all conspiracy about it, right? Let's just start off with one of the easiest solutions. Tin foil. Exactly how well does it work? How much do you need? Let's take a look at something like that. Coming back to the star, I'm going to try to do as, as minimum amount as, as possible here to see what works and what doesn't. What happens if we put the NTAG chip in tinfoil? Well, I don't know, not gonna get much of a read. There you go, a simple, simple slab of tinfoil. You don't have to wrap your cards over and over and over, right? Let's go ahead and try this with all the cards. Can she read the hotel key? Nope, not at all. How about the magic Chinese card? Is it, is it magic enough to read through the tinfoil? No. No big trouble under Little China. No magic present. Crazy Russian hackers, right? Russian transit system. How you doing? Can you be read? Different credential technology. This is MyFair Ultralight. How about it? Not lightweight enough to float above the power of tin foil. And just to round her out, we've still got our iClass CIOS, which is of course actually NXP, same as the other MyFair credentials, so nothing different expected here. Nope, not finding a thing at all. No known tags. So, that's one thing that we can cover. Do you need to wrap layer upon layer upon layer upon layer to keep your shit safe? No, you don't. One simple layer of tin foil is all you need to keep this burrito from being cooked in that oven. But of course, that's janky. Like, no one's going to walk around a corporate campus with tin foil around their cards. So that's why when we recommend solutions to clients, we say, all right, you really want to use a lanyard or protective sleeve. All right, so here's kind of a conventional RFID blocking solution. I think this came free with some 
Amazon purchase. I don't know. If we slip this into our little, you know, just kind of foil line sleeve, this should be no different than what we saw earlier with the tin foil, right? Try to hold it up. Yeah, not finding anything. All right, that's going to time out. And we shouldn't expect anything different, even with other technologies, because they're all 13, 5, 6 megahertz. Anything, anything at all? Womp womp. Okay, yeah. So, this is kind of a conventional solution. But again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of touch time. There's a lot of farting about and, and sliding in. And, and if, I, if I need to use the card, I got to take this out. I got to fucking pull this out. Um, might be fine for a transit card or a, or a payment card, but if you're in an office environment, if you're badging in and out all the time, you really can't be producing this out of your pocket, farting around, sliding in, sliding out. Nobody's, nobody's got time for that. So what do you do? This one, however, this one right here by, uh, well, I'll drop a link down below. I don't work for this company or get any free stuff. I bought this on Amazon. I think it's Identigard. This solution is pretty neat. And what I thought was fascinating about it Easy to install the card. All right, so you slip the badge in. Now you notice I'm touching the badge right here. Like, yes, it has this little metal plate in the inside of here. It's got a little piece of foil, but I am touching the card. It's not foil on both sides. So this is what fascinated me when I checked this out. If you present this to the badge reader, and like, all right, foil side toward the badge reader. Well, that makes sense, right? We just did that. Put a piece of foil on the card, it blocks the signal. However, if I flip this around, I said to myself, well, how is it blocking anything here? Like this is, it's clear. It's not even a piece of thin plastic or perspex or anything like that. It's, I can just touch the card. Surely the badge reader must be able to see what's happening. What? It's not getting a read. That's what, why do you do this? And the neat part about the design of this sucker, m again, most protective type lanyards, they involve playing this game where you do this and you fart it around and how many of the feds in the audience have, you know, recognized, all right, I'll put this over here. Okay, there's my card. It read it, it reads it. That's not what you have to do. Remember, this has a little springy bit right here. We don't need to completely move this away from the foil. All you have to do is just barely separate the card from the foil, little squeeze, and instantly, boom. We can read the card. So you walk up to a badge reader with this on your lanyard. It's almost the same action as presenting it, but you're just giving it a squeeze as you do. Beep, and there you go, you're in. And this should work the same way on every credential that we have here. Doesn't read, obviously, if I'm right up against it. Anything else? Nope, but if I give it a little squeeze, reads it right away. That didn't work in my brain. I, 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 took this, I took this out and I said, look, I've got to talk to some of my RF people. I said, what is, what is happening here? Why is this, what is going on? Well, Bobak mentioned something to me when he was explaining this. He said, try it with low frequency cards. Low frequency cards aren't usually rated to work with this, or rather this isn't rated to work with low frequency cards. And I said, this gets more interesting as you go. So here we have LF search. All right, we've got our T5577 card, but slip it in the sleeve. Will it or won't it read? Ooh, it said did find signal. So something is getting through. It didn't quite manage, manage to demodulate or to decode it, but it's picking up something. And if we went through all the other LF credentials, we'll probably see similar results. So what is the magic juju inside of this product by ID Stronghold? or rather not even inside of it, just the backing plate. Well, I have got, got a couple of these, right? So I took one apart. This is all that's in there. It's not a big slab of metal. I mean, it's just a little piece of foil. But if we go ahead and take any one of our cards, right? Again, placing it, blocking against it shouldn't work. Oh, what's going on? Can't find anything. Nope, no tags are gonna be found. And then if I slide this just slightly out of the way, instantly, bam, that works. What if I took a piece of aluminum foil that was exactly the size of a card, just like you just saw, and we saw how little foil it took in the past. Oh my gosh, is this all that they're sticking in the cards? Well, 
if an entire chunk of foil were to work, what if we were to tear off some? What if we were to take just a half piece of foil? Do you think this is going to prevent a reed? Oh, that was able to get it. What if I have the same amount of foil, and this time it's just kind of hanging out in front of the card? Nope, that absolutely still works. Stranger and stranger. Now, the same amount of foil that we had before, but I had torn it. What's going to happen here? Nope, definitely gets a read there. So that's strange. Covering the same amount of card, but with a break down the foil, Liberty Bell style. What could be happening? What's going on? There we get a read again. So it's not about the volume of metal. It's not about the weight of metal. It's about the fact that the metal can resonate at just the right size. Here is a piece of titanium. Is that going to block things? Oh, absolutely will. Looks, look at that. Now, again, this isn't covering the whole card. What's going on here? How about this? How about a big slab of stainless steel? Absolutely not happening. And you can see, again, we're not covering the whole card. So with the badge, again, not completely covered, but we're not going to get a read. What is happening? What is going on inside of the reader and inside of the card when pieces of metal, even sometimes very thin pieces of metal, are in the mix? Well, my buddy Russ, who works in the Wireless Village, explained it to me, and Bobak said virtually the same thing. It's not so much that you are blocking the signals, because obviously the EM noise is, is beaming right through this PVC card and smashing into this piece of foil. What you need is a big enough sink. You need a piece of metal that will actually sink and, and absorb that EM power. Because remember, how does RFID work? The reader is the source of all the power. There's no battery inside these credentials. The reader emits power, wakes up the card, and then they magnetically couple to change information back and forth. If we can provide an additional sink of energy so that the power from the reader can't get into the card, that should prevent the card from operating correctly. Now, it's not perfect, obviously, unless you're really up against it when you have a flimsy piece of metal. But if you have a thick piece of metal, if you have any kind of heavy duty metal, that's going to be just, you know, boom, just a big old lead weight and anchor pulling down on that energy. So the way this product works is really fascinating to me. Again, you don't have to wrap around your whole card. As long as your card is up against one tiny piece of metal, super thin, and in the case of products like ID Stronghold and similar competitors, this metal is tuned. It is actually calibrated and cut to just the right size so that you get just enough energy drain that the frequency in this card will not actually work. It will not couple with a high frequency card. Now, in fact, my buddy Russ, he told me he's made his own versions of this in the past. He's made them either with inert metal or he's made them with coils of wire and he even put either a little capacitor, a little resistor, or in one case, an LED in the mix. So it would light up. It would actually take the energy from the card reader. It would light up the, the LED on the card, but it wasn't enough energy to let the card itself wake up. And in fact, using the power of a reader to capture that energy onto a, an antenna and then pump it into an LED, that's the purpose of this little card, this little wallet-sized card from Dangerous Things. You can actually, maybe we'll get the lighting to work. Bam. There we go. So HF, 13 megahertz energy, 1356, is being pumped out of something. And in fact, in this case, it's my Proxmark. And that is lighting this up. And if we go ahead and try an LF search, what are we going to get? We're going to get low frequency energy. So this card says, oh, my 125 kilohertz antenna is getting energy from somewhere and it's pumping it into the LED. So if you don't have one of these little wallet sized cards, they're, they're really kind of groovy. Uh, if you're ever curious what badge technology a site is using, something like this, you can, you know, wave it in front of the reader, see what lights up. And it's not going to be nearly as dirty as my technique for anyone who hasn't seen uh, Tara and I, my wife and I both have uh, subdermals. We have chips in our hands. And anytime we want to, 
if, uh, if I'm curious about, you know, oh, what's this card reader running? I can try just badging with my hand against it and seeing if it wakes up and I'll know, i say, oh, okay, it beeped. Well, they must be running HID Prox or, oh, they're running iClass or Indala or whatever we want to program our hands as. Uh, that's, of course, a little bit dirty because if they're checking their access control logs really diligently, they're going to see a bad credential read. They're going to say, okay, why is this unauthorized credential hitting? Uh, a device like this is about the most quiet way you can go because it's not actually authenticating with a reader. The reader doesn't see that a card is present. It's not sending data down the wire to your door controller. Your access control system doesn't see it. So I definitely dig on this little product from Dangerous Things a lot. So let's go for a real world test, the wallet test. This is a, an empty wallet, a dummy wallet. We would carry this either in a high crime area if you're expecting to be pickpocketed or we can use it on the job for wallet drops see where people turn things into security, try to put interesting credentials inside of it, see if anybody plays with it, steals it. In the wallet, let's go ahead and put, well, what's gonna be good? It's a transit card, all right? We'll put our transit card in our wallet right here. Will this read right through the, uh, through the wallet? It should. And sure enough, instantly, boom, there's our MyFair Ultralight. Now, if you have a credential in your wallet, and you don't obviously want to shove a giant like hunk of plastic in your wallet, that, that would not make a lot of sense. What would happen if you just took a piece of foil or metal, lay it in the wallet in the next pocket over? Is this enough to have that effect? I mean, it's not quite touching. They're a little bit separated. I don't know. Let's see what would happen. Hey, fancy that. Now, of course, wallets, you got tags can move around, cards can move around. Let's try to make this, you know, even more extreme here. If we tuck that down really low, we spring this off to the side. I don't know if that's going to still be an effective blocking. And in fact, it's not. So, a fun little proof of concept. You can see that the idea of stacking two cards right on top of one another, even if one of them is just a thin piece of foil. If that foil is properly tuned, you don't have to completely envelop your cards but you would be able to block most reads of your cards. Let's say one more option for you here for the sort of poor man's security wallet. We got a piece of foil like this. Let's again, we're gonna to try to take as little as possible in the foil department because you know, you need to, uh, you need to prepare for the, the, the doomsday with your, your friends and all that. You gotta put your foil around your Bitcoin and you know, your ammo and your Bible or whatever else it is that crazy people are putting in their bodies these days. Silver alkaloid, I don't know. If we were to pack one, one thin slip of foil into our wallet right here, close it on up, what do you think? You think it's going to work? You think it's going to not? You know, pause the video now and enter your comments for a chance to who gives a damn. All right. We're going to get anything? Doesn't look like it. All right. Poor man's. RFID blocking wallet. Now, is this ultimately a solution that we would consider robust enough for a corporate client? No, we're not going to recommend that to others. But as far as, you know, exigent solutions, if you're really concerned for some reason about somebody trying to read the credentials in your wallet, I don't know, maybe you give that a dance. Personally, I'm going to stick on corporate campuses with proper blocking lanyards. That's what we will keep recommending to our clients and to others. But if you've got an old DEF CON badge, shove that in your wallet or, you know, come to LockCon one year. And if we hand out more of these big, these are uh, to manufacture turning tools, if you're curious. That was the badge uh, one year at LockCon. It was pretty cool. So if you want to stick a big slab of metal in your pocket, go for it. I guess you could also kind of use this. Even in, in London, you could get a pretty good, good swing out of somebody with this. And if a cop stops you and say, hey, what do you think you're entitled to defend yourself? You say, no, it's, it's for blocking my uh, RFID credentials from theft, officer. It's totally nothing nefarious. I don't know if that would hold up, you know, in a court. You'd have to ask your barrister about that. But for now, this was kind of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun playing with it. I, didn't, I wasn't even sure what would work and what wouldn't. But uh, yeah. Salud. Stay safe out there. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. It's the end of the video. You know what that means. It's Pelican Case prize time. So, we're, we, we've really gotten a nice big dent out of all my, my spare parts and things. 
Some of these, I'm not going to lie, some of these are, are less functional than others. The key, ooh, a lot of CH751s. Should I start giving these away? Well, they're only like a buck. Maybe maybe uh, something a little more effective. You know what? We, we did the 9-volt light in a recent video. If you're not familiar with what this guy is, this is kind of a little survival light. The idea being, come the apocalypse, when the zombies are at the door, lights... You know, you don't need to carry a huge light around all the time if it's just for the doomsday. This guy will interface quite nicely with 9-volt batteries. The, the theory going is that they will still be perfectly extant and, and available in, uh, in the aftertimes. And with a little, you know, click action, you can, you can get some, some serious light factor going on. And, uh, you know, you can see things because hackers are all about their flashlights. And why carry a, a huge sucker when you can just throw one of these in your glove box or in the bottom of your hacker bag and have it available for you whenever you might need it. So there you go. If you would like to win this, down in the comments, you sound off with the word of the week. Uh, the word of the week is always something tasty that you should always put into your face. So we're going to say the word of the week. The word of the week is wine, as I'm reaching over for my, for my glass right now. If you use the word wine, we use the internet uh, random scriptum a thing, and it's going to choose one of you, and then I will respond to that one of you and get a mailing address. And, uh, you know, this can be yours. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and stay safe out there. So, just because I know some people are going to ask regarding the Dangerous Things card, right? Like, if it can draw power, is it a suitable blocking medium? Well, let's find out. We've got our NTAG 216, right? Obviously, that reads right away. Kabam! But, we drop this on top of her. What do we get? Whoa! Potential. Potential solution? Maybe? Maybe not? Let's see. What if we kind of kind of put her off to the side? Oh, oh, de detection, collision, something? Wow, it made Thunderbird crash. Amazing. Let's see. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, it's definitely... It's, it's definitely fucculating the process. How far out do you have to be? Can we, can we give her one of these? Wow. Still, still not getting her. Let's try the wallet test. All right, so if we have a Dangerous Things card in our wallet, and then you have a card in here, not, not quite lined up. Let's see, what do we get? Ooh, she read that time. They're not, they, they're not quite sandwiched hard together. If I give it some good pressure, like let's say your, your ass is sitting on it. No, still, still not an effective blocking tool. What about low frequency? Will this do anything for low frequency? All right, we can read procs. And then it's time to, uh, to see if we can block procs. Let's give it the best shot we can, right on top. Whew! No! <laughs> right there! It's like, boom, found you. Let's, let's put it underneath. Not that that would make any real difference. Let's try it. Bam! Prox found. So, yeah, the simple fact is, yes, this will pull power, but there, there is such a simple data read process. Uh, it's not a complicated power up and, uh, you know, the, the card is doing less work. All it has to do is barf out this very brief card string one time, and even if the Dangerous Things card sucks some of that power, it does not reliably suck at all. So there you go. Is this a cool tool? Indisputably so. Is it a card blocker, a card bunny, or anything like that that uh, we, you know, we wish we could just slip in our wallets? Unfortunately, not so much. But still, you should go get one, right? Fucking kicks ass. Thank you very much. Uh, I knew you would yell at me down in the comments below me if I didn't try a bunch of stuff like this. But I'm certain there's something you think I forgot to try. So let me know what that was.
because I always love hearing from all of you, and anything that I could do better, I will do better for you. Right on. Stay safe out there.